Today I'm going to cover how I make a prop block. Uh, when these are uh, fiberglass molds that I sell for uh, either making or forming uh, propeller blades for indoor. Um, the, I have to start off first. Uh, I have a jig that I use that each station can move independently and at the end of that uh, or when, I, when I'm making them I use uh, several layers of balsa. You can probably see here I kind of cut it randomly in terms of this in order to get the, the turn and fold right. I usually use three layers of balsa and then uh, when I put it on the form on the bottom I'll glue these little laser cut pieces on here that give it the, the camber that's required for the actual form um, so it stays in that particular form. Uh, then when it's done I will uh, sand it a bit, do any filling that's required because obviously there is some in here where the cuts are and then I cover it with about three usually three layers of uh, three ounce like a really close uh, weave fiberglass uh, let it sit for a couple of days and afterwards it's nice and smooth um, just have to sand it a bit so you get a really nice smooth uh, surface and this one has uh, not actually been uh, used before so I'm going to show the process of how, the, how I do this uh, I use this stuff, it's a little bit of free coat um, this is kind of smelly so I actually recommend doing this outside normally and I just use a, in this case, it's just a simple acid brush from uh, what I would usually use for solder or just simple epoxy applying. And I just put a pretty generous coat on top of here. And then it has to let, you have to just let it sit and dry, which I'm going to do now, but I'm going to do it outside. So we'll be back for step two. Here it is a short time later. Um, I have the mold back and uh, in and it's dry. Uh, next I will put on a coat of wax. There's two types of wax that I have here. One is a Partol uh, number two paste wax and the other one is a Partol high temp uh, wax. I've only recently been uh, experimenting with this particular uh, one, um, mainly because the uh, fiberglass and epoxy matrix I use uh, requires a 180, uh, 180 degree Fahrenheit post cure, and this supposedly doesn't work very well at those elevated temperatures and this particular brand uh, work, or this particular formulation works uh, supposedly a little bit better. Um, I'm not sure that that's actually the case at this point. Um, I've used this a lot more than I have this, but I'll be experimenting with this uh, as time goes on. So this one I'm going to use here today. Just have a basic paint can opener to open up the top on this. And I have just basically a paper towel that's inside of here that I've used in the past for applying wax. You can see I just wipe it on and then I wipe it on here fairly thick. Supposedly it's not required with the free coat, but I'll tell you. I like this stuff to separate and separate fairly easily, and when I do it this way, it definitely separates. Now I have to let this sit for a while, and we'll start, uh, we'll continue with the next step. So the next step is where we uh, end up doing the fiberglass work itself and I'm going to cover uh, the work surface with a piece of plastic. Uh, this is I believe like a three and a half or four mil piece. Um, I like to cover as much of the space as I can uh, because 
that way I don't have less to clean up and at the end of this all I'm going to do is just take this and toss it. Actually, this is. I'm going to just go that direction because it will be easier uh, for everything. I have a mixing cup, I have a popsicle stick, and then I have a just a card uh, that I use. Uh, this came from a recent trip to uh, New Orleans. But old credit cards and such work just fine. Now I will try to speed this up as it goes, but this kind of takes a while to do. So this is going to be kind of a long, longer video. So the mix on this is going to be uh, basically it's 45 to 100, so it's just a little bit under 1 to 2. So I put in uh, one part, so about 20 milliliters <clears throat> of the resin. Actually, just a little bit over 20, so I will mix this up to. 30 and that will be just about right. I have to check it. Yep, that's just about perfect. So it's just under just under 10 on one and 20 on the other, so the proportions are right. And now I do the mixing. All right, coming back after uh, stopping it from mixing. Uh, it's basically fully mixed up at this point. And I brought in a couple of paper towels. I reused the popsicle sticks. Just wipe it off and set it aside. And then I'm going to take this and I'm going to pour it literally on the surface of the plastic I have here. Fairly literally. Then I have pre-cut pieces of fiberglass. Um, here, what I typically do is just lay them onto this. Put on my gloves. Make it a little bit less unhealthy for me. And I use this to kind of press the uh, epoxy around inside and underneath. Now I have two different types of cloth here. Let me let me explain what they are. Uh, one is a crow's weave, and this one tends to deform uh, rather easily, which is good in certain ways and bad in others. Um, for this particular, uh, for putting it onto surfaces like this, it's great because it it. Uh, tends to stay in place. The downside is that uh, trying to force epoxy through it, it tends to move around and change into weird shapes sometimes. So you gotta be really careful about how you uh, press it. And I'm just gonna add a fairly uh, large amount of epoxy on here. And I'll put uh, about three layers of this uh, crow's weave on here first. There's quite a bit of uh, epoxy underneath. And then I have at the bottom a piece of close-knit uh, regular weave which is it doesn't have those deforming issues. And what I can do then is I can use this as a kind of bulldozer to move the epoxy around safely underneath and then you can see as I do this 
basically becomes much darker and the epoxy goes through all of the cloth fairly quickly. At least I hope you can see that through here. I put on quite a bit and now it's just getting kind of forced through that fiberglass matrix. And if you don't have enough uh, of epoxy through here, you can always just pour some on the top. And get enough. Now this is way wider than it needs to be for this particular form. So I have enough for here. We have an excess here. I don't know how well you can see that on the video, but there's quite a bit here. I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to pour some more on the top. And then I'm going to put on two more layers of the crow's Type, put on a bit more on top of that. And then I'm going to put this last layer on top. Now, why would I not use the regular, just a regular type? Well, what I've discovered is sometimes the regular type doesn't like to lay flat on the curved surfaces as well as the other uh, pros style. And what you end up happening, uh, what ends up happening with it is that it tends to uh, come off a little bit. Uh, it comes off the surface a bit. So using uh, a couple of these uh, just just like two to help you get this out works really well. To kind of squeeze everything in. And it tends to stay really flat onto the surface that you put it in. Now this is really an excess of epoxy I'm going to try to get it all out to the edges, and I'm going to try to squeeze some of it out like this, kind of bulldoze it out. Let's put that off to the side. Well, not quite exactly. I use it to kind of pick it up. This is actually the reason I dislike using gloves because it's hard to pick anything up. But on the other hand, it's probably a lot healthier for me. Then I can use this to kind of pick it up like this. And here's where you put this entire bit on top of the form. If you end up with spots where it looks kind of like there's not enough epoxy in it, you can always just pick it up and rub it in like this. And these little bits of loose fiber and such, you can always just kind of push them off to the side and then rub them off on here. That way you don't have to sand them off later.
a little bit of a weird spot here. I'll just cover it with a bunch of epoxy and that'll have to get sanded off later, but that's okay. And then there's a bit light on epoxy here, so I'll just add a little bit more here. looks really good. And I just lay this on a piece of paper towel, fold it up a couple times because there will be some leakage. Uh, this is a fairly thin epoxy. <coughs> so you want to put this somewhere now where it's warm. Uh, it's still kind of cool out so we have radiators uh, that provide heat uh, but this is relatively close to perfect the only part I will need to worry about is doing some sanding right in here because it's a little bit odd in that spot just throw a little bit extra epoxy on there so it will fill up and Fine. Put that on the radiator in behind. Uh, this part gets, this is the cleanup that you have to do. Describe that as well. Typically use old credit cards and such for these sorts of things, but I have to thank Jake for uh, Jake Palmer for turning me on to the plastic film because this makes life so much easier. Just kind of wipe this down with a paper towel so I can use it again. Put it aside for right now. Voila, cleanup is done.